topic of this video is the number one thing that you should systemize within your trade business. And it's being fueled by a conversation that started from a comment in our Facebook community, this comment right here from Mr. Al Levy, who for those of you who may or may not know is the pretty much the guy who wrote the book on systems for trade businesses. He's an absolute legend. So it's kind of a loaded question fueling what he knows very well is to be true. However, the question was, before we jump in guys, please give this channel a subscribe and like this post as you see it. Uh, subscribing will make sure that you get notified when we release more of these, which we're gonna be doing a lot of, and they're all gonna be valuable, so you may as well do it. Now let's jump right in. Uh, having documented systems and non-stop training in your business important. Now, I've decided to dive and break this down into um, this specific topic of what is the number one thing that you should systemize in your business based on a couple of books that I have read in the past. I, I wanna do a quick shout out to uh, my buddy Dave, who has a business called Systemology. He wrote this awesome book. If you haven't checked this out, go and get it. I'll put some links to the Amazon um, uh, cart in the uh, notes for this episode so go check that out uh, and i'm also want to make a shout out as well this has been kind of rehashed recently by a guy called ryan dice in a book called get scalable it's a very similar framework and essentially i'm going to run you through exactly what this looks like from the perspective of what you should be systemizing as a mission critical thing within your business now the place to start is normally what is the number one thing that we deliver as our primary service so if that is for you, and I've got an example right here, and we're going to go through this example. Um, uh, again, shout out to the Systemology guys. This framework was developed off them years and years ago. I, I, I put this together um, off, a, off an event I went to for them. Um, I'll be rehashing it a lot more lately with a bit more modern, modern feel and touch, but I thought this is perfectly relevant for you guys out there that are trades. Uh, what I've done here is I've mapped out, as Dave calls it, the critical client flow for a hot water heater installation company. So um, you'll be able to see here, the very first part of this is, okay, well, what's the actual traffic source? So essentially, what's the trigger of getting people into uh, this, into our system, into our main service? Like what actually happens for them to come in? So that could be a number of things. It could be referrals, it could be BNI events, it could be an introduction, it could be um, some form of online marketing, whatever it might be. Then beyond that, we have, okay, well, what's the engagement or the content of the offer? Like what actually happens then once we, like the next step from them seeing an ad or them making that initial piece of, that initial contact. So that might be they get sent to a web page. Uh, perhaps they get sent to some form, of, some form of content. It could be a blog or a podcast, or it could be a YouTube video, or it could be something like that. Perhaps it's an offer or a discount or a voucher or something along those lines. Then once they've, being sent to that page, the options then for them normally would be, okay, well, how do we make contact? How do we actually go from being a cold lead to a marketing qualified lead? So that would normally be an inquiry through the website. It could be a phone call. It could be a web chat inquiry, something along those lines. And then, so once that first point of contact happens, then we can document the processes that need to happen off the back of that in order to take them through what should be your sales process. And this is something we're really big on over in the agency because we do this day to day with all of our clients. We help them really clearly define a sales and marketing system and process, which includes pipeline management for their sales process. So essentially when they come in, there'd be some sort of conversation that would happen. And what would that look like? It could be a triage call. It could be a scoping session. It could be just a general chit chat. It could be a number of different things. So off the back of that, if everything fares well, then typically we would then take them to the stage of quoting or we would be giving them an estimate perhaps. Uh, and that normally is, okay, well, if everything's gone well and they've liked what we've said, this is what it's gonna cost. And so we normally would reframe that up as an es estimate. Uh, and then, and the reason we would do an estimate normally before a quote is because in the early stages of a sales call or as the sales process, if the person who's on the other end of the phone has an understanding of roughly what the price point's gonna be for that product, that could be an either a huge time saver for you, which means they, okay, like if, if the average ticket item is gonna be 20 odd grand and they're expecting it to be three, then you don't need to waste any more time with it. So the estimate is a really good step in between there. And then of course, once we then go out uh, off the back of that, if it involves maybe a site visit or something along those lines, 
then we can, while we're out on site, we can then talk to them about, well, this is the actual price, here's a quote, and we can actually lock something in solid. Normally, off the back of submitting a quote, there would be some sort of follow-up process, and this often is the place where most people tend to drop the ball. It's actually in the follow-up. So I would encourage you guys, if you don't have a solid process around follow-up, make sure that you do go and get one. Then we would have some sort of fee paid. So off the back of there being a follow-up, um, if they decide to go ahead, is there a deposit? Is it a scheduling fee? Is it some sort of financial commitment from the customer to make sure that they are qualified and they are ready to be locked into your schedule? That's a smart play. It weeds out, as soon as you people start pulling out their, their wallet, it essentially will weed out the tire kickers. So then of course we have to go through the delivery. Now delivery truthfully should be probably a flow chart like this on its own and for, would look differently for all of your different products and services. However, essentially, what is involved in delivering this product or service? In this instance, a hot water installation, what does that actually look like? And in most cases, that would be a checklist and it would be a checklist that would be actioned by your technicians that are out on site. And the reason that we would do that is for, a, well, there's a number of reasons why we would do that, but primarily we wanna make sure that, first of all, everything that we need done is being done from a top level management point of view. And second of all, it creates consistency in the way that you deliver your product or service. Now, the reason that's important is because you don't want 10 different techs running around and everyone doing things their own specific way. So a checklist is a really good way to, to make that happen. Then we would have like a payment. So off the back of the delivery, if that's how you operate anyway, you would normally then collect payments. So what does that part of the process look like? You need to be able, you need to document that. And I would say as well, uh, in the early stage, before we start doing any work, you would wanna have clear terms and conditions about how the payment process actually works to ensure that you do get paid. And then we would have handover and handover would normally involve, okay, this is how you use your thing. So if there's training, if there's manuals, if there's instructions, if there's tutorials, if you've got an online platform or something that people can tune into to get that information, fantastic, whatever it looks like, what does handover actually look like in the interest of helping them make sure that they're getting the best value out of that product or service. And then if there's the opportunity off the back of it to either upsell, to resell, or to even ask for referrals, fantastic. What does that process look like? And it doesn't have to be complicated, but it should certainly exist as part of the process because you wanna make sure that you're maximizing every opportunity there to expand the customer lifetime value of that individual and perhaps expand the opportunities surrounding their, their network and how you might be able to get access to that, provided of course, that you've done a good job. So anyway, again, I'm gonna put links to these books down below. I encourage you to go check them out. They're both very good. Um, I'll put a link to this framework as well if you wanna go um, um, get a copy of that as well. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed that and stay tuned for upcoming videos. Ciao. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please, while you're here, subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Now listen, if you are a trade-based business and you work in projects, roofing, bathrooms, kitchen renovations, home renovations, solar installations, that kind of thing. We would love to be able to showcase you as our next success case. Insane return on ad spend over here. We're talking 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 13,000% return on ad spend, week in, week out with some of our clients. And we would love to put you in that picture. So please head across to tradey.wiki forward slash YT for YouTube. Tradey.wiki forward slash YT for YouTube. I look forward to chatting to you soon. Enjoy the next episode and thank you for all your support.